a shocking moment in history graphically preserved. This is the personal appointment book of an assassinated civil rights leader. Pierced by bullets stained with blood, it's scribed with secrets. Put it in another way, his DNA is there. So the actual code, the code of Malcolm's physical existence is on that book. From the scene of assassination to its scandalous appearance on the auction block, follow the adventures of this disturbing artifact, Malcolm X's bullet-riddled diary. He was born Malcolm Little in Omaha, Nebraska in 1925. A gifted student who later drifted into a life of drugs and crime. It was during a prison sentence for burglary that Malcolm Little experienced his now famous spiritual rebirth. Converting to the black Muslim faith and adopting a new name, Malcolm X. When he had finished doing his time, he clocked in as the most militant voice of his generation. Malcolm actually told the society what black people thought. And it scared the hell out of everybody. The black man doesn't have to be taught to love the white man. The white man has to be taught to love the black man. Anytime you beg another man to set you free, you will never be free. Our people are still the victims of brutality, and most of them are being brutalized by the police. But the fiery radical was as conservative as a banker when it came to one thing, how he managed his time. He was obsessive in his work habits, meticulous in the way he kept his appointments book. It was as much a part of his wardrobe as his trademark horn-rimmed glasses. His sense of time was amazing. My mother always talked about him always being on time, uh, talking about the value of time, not to waste time. Perhaps it was Malcolm's ascetic tastes that wouldn't allow him to splurge for a leather-bound book. Either way, his daily diary was a red leatherette job, which went for about a dollar. Along with a crush of appointments, it was filled with the phone numbers of prominent African Americans. The author Alex Haley, the actor Ossie Davis. The modest little book would one day have an even more momentous appointment with history. On February 21st, 1965, Malcolm had a speaking engagement in Harlem. He walked into the Audubon Ballroom on 168th Street, his red address book in its familiar place, pocketed over his heart. He had misgivings about appearing before the crowd, which included FBI agents and hostile black Muslims. Malcolm had recently split with the Muslims, incurring the wrath of their leader, Elijah Muhammad. The time was 3.10 p.m. Swallowing his fears, he walked in front of the auditorium. Almost immediately, there was a disturbance in the audience. Shouts, a scuffle. But this was only a diversion. From another part of the auditorium, an explosion, a shotgun blast. And the next thing I saw was Malcolm falling back in a dead faint. Then a 45 caliber pistol and a 9 millimeter automatic pumped shots into Malcolm after he had fallen. Three shotgun pellets passed through his breast pocket and became the final entries into Malcolm X's daily diary. Malcolm's journey had ended. But his little red diary was about to begin some amazing travels of its own. A detective lifted the gory piece of evidence out of Malcolm's pocket. It was used as evidence at the murder trial. Held up in court, the book told a graphic tale. What it tells me is that uh, the people who were shooting at Malcolm weren't amateurs. But that's not what the red book and the other evidence told the jury. Three black Muslims who were not known to be professional gunmen were convicted and sentenced. Their guilt remains in dispute. After their day in court, personal effects are routinely returned to the victim's family. But Malcolm X's widow, Betty Shabazz, who was then pregnant with twins, wanted no reminders of her loss. 
The red address book and its property clerk's invoice were thrown into an evidence box, which was sealed and stacked in the DA's office. Forgotten for more than three decades. But Malcolm was on Bill Bastone's mind one day in 1997. The editor of a muckraking website called The Smoking Gun, Bill was looking through the Malcolm X files, which since 1990 have been stored at the New York Municipal Archive. When he opened the evidence box, he found a number of gory mementos from the assassination. Shotgun shells, papers drilled with bullets. Then, a still more amazing find. When I saw the evidence envelope and describing it as his diary, which clearly, uh, it would only be in there if it, it was like the other pieces of paper it had been perforated by bullets. I thought, well, this is, this is a remarkable, you know, I was dying to look at it. But the envelope was empty. Malcolm X's diary had vanished. At that point, I thought maybe it was in another box and they didn't bring all the boxes to me. So I didn't really think too much of it because I realized that it's kind of a haphazard, um, storage operation and I knew that I had saw all these other things that I thought were equally fascinating. Eighteen months later came yet another twist to the story. Bastone was reading the gossip column of the New York Post. It reported the auction of a number of valuable documents including Malcolm X's bullet riddled diary. I sat there and I was like whoa wait a minute I, and I read it again and I went I went you know holy f I know what that is. He also realized that the diary had probably been filched from the evidence box. And it wasn't long before Malcolm X's family would know that the pricey item on the auction block was hot goods. We were all, I would say, outraged that someone would have the audacity to sell my father's property when his family is still here. Are they going to think that we're just going to sit by and allow it to happen? The FBI didn't allow it to happen. Agents seized the diary from the auction house and began investigating its devious travels. The trail led to Douglas Henderson, a former court clerk who admitted to stealing the diary in 1991 and then selling it to a memorabilia collector for $5,000. In July of 2000, Henderson pleaded guilty to larceny and received five years probation. Following the trial, Malcolm X's diary was returned to his family, where it remains a chilling reminder of the slaying of one of the greatest civil rights leaders. To the a vicious cycle of poverty, of disease, and of death. Your times will never get better until you make them better. Malcolm X's bloodstained diary is in his children's private collection in New York City.